Well, according to the street, the decision from the Chancellor could send the Ape shares quickly to 30-50% gains, while it can also send AMC down 20-30%. to Again, only if the Chancellor approves the settlement and the conversion begins. But again, there is a 50-50 chance, meaning that if the Chancellor doesn't actually accept the settlement, we might be looking at the vice versa scenario in which Ape could fall. 20-30% and see AMC common stock go up as high as 30 or 50% if we found the same example. And guess what is the selling point, the short selling point of the short sellers? If AMC and Ape have the same voting rights and represent the same company, then they should have the same prices. And guess what, they're not vouching for consolidating the prices on the higher level, but simply on the lower one, trying to compare and align the Ape prices with AMC common. This is why explains why so many traders are shorting AMC common, driving up the cost to borrow fee as a result over 1000% on average. In comparison with Ape has cost to borrow fee of only 4.1%. So I guess we can speculate how screwed will be each and every short seller if the judge doesn't approve the settlement. How these people going long on the Ape and short on the common stock will react if you Use the example of the street, AMC come and go to 50, 30%, 20% in a single trading session. And these people have to pay this 1000% borrowing fee just to hope on the following trading session to be able to dump the shares and push the stock down. I guess this is kind of an insurance for each and every article talking about the arbitrage play stating that, hey, it is a very risky play. Don't fall for it. Don't think it's easy. Don't try to do the math because simply there is many many variables that will change the game. Very important reminder, in June alone short sellers lost 37 billion dollars according to Bloomberg. So you understand that they are set up for hell of a right if they are wrong again. Meanwhile the banks received a very bad statement from the Fed announcing that they actually confirmed that the new capital requirements will be coming into play and they will be required very transparently to report each and every exposure on the market they also have to report their counterparties just listen to this and according to the fed a lot of these banks will change the way how they loan money to their counterparties meaning bad news for the hedge funds who cannot live without leverage the proposed adjustments would require banks with assets of 100 billion or more to account for unrealized losses and gains in their available for sale securities when calculating their regulatory capital this change would improve the transparency of regulatory capital ratios since it would better reflect banking organizations' actual loss-absorbing capacity. These changes would increase capital requirements overall, but I want to emphasize that they would principally raise capital requirements for the largest, most complex banks. More broadly, recall that banks are, by nature, very leveraged and fund only a small portion of their assets with capital. One can think of the proposal's more accurate risk measures as equivalent to requiring the largest banks to hold an additional two percentage points of capital, or an additional $2 of capital for every $100 of risk-weighted assets as currently measured. While this increase in requirements could lead to some changes in bank activities, the benefits of making the financial system more resilient to stresses that could otherwise impair growth are greater. That is not to ignore concerns that changes in capital requirements may cause firms to change their behavior and the way that financial services are provided to our economy. We intend to consider comments carefully, and any changes would be implemented with appropriate phase-ins. This phase-in will allow ample time for banks to adjust their balance sheets and activities and to build capital over time. In fact, most banks already have enough capital today to meet the new requirements. For the banks that would need to build capital to meet the requirements. Let me know what do you guys think about this. Let me know which of the potential predictions for the APE and AMC price action will be coming into play. The one with 30 to 50 percent upside for the APE or the one with 20 to 50 percent downside for AMC.